outset uh, in this hearing that this court, this court's view is that the river represents both tangible and intangible heritage resource, resources. And it doesn't appear that there's any difference. There, there's no dispute about it because yesterday, council argued yesterday and also acknowledged the developer, if I can use it up, the developer acknowledged that. Yes. And the developer did everything in its power to comply with what heritage, which HCW wanted. So we, 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 we won't criticize the developer. It's more about the concept of intangible heritage. Why is the applicant saying, if the concrete buildings, if the high rises, the high rise buildings go up, 10 stories, two 10 stories, uh, 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 two developments would, would, would be about 10 stories high, that in itself would be detrimental to our cultural and historic um, Th That's history. something that had to be values. considered. It's a, it's a, it's a relevant question. Yes. Is that, do, does the existence of buildings in itself yes. destroy intangible heritage? Yes. And that, and that was considered in detail by the decision makers. And I'll take your ladyship Sorry, I didn't hear. It was considered by, in the, I'm talking about the, the, whether, the whether these buildings yes. will uh, harm the intangible heritage. That is something that was considered, and it's not a new point raised by the applicants. It's something that was very much at the forefront of the decision makers' minds when considering it. The conclusion they come to, and I'll take your ladyship to yeah. the evidence, is that those buildings will not harm the heritage. In fact, the development as a whole will benefit the intangible heritage. And I'll take your ladyship to the evidence of the benefit to intangible heritage of the development. And the, and that, uh, and the flip side of that is that uh, stopping the development will prevent the protection and benefit and advancement and commemoration of that intangible heritage. So if I may move on to yes. the, the evidence and then I think that would I just address paused because Sorry, question. I just paused because you said that uh, I, I, I was a bit concerned when you, you, you argued that, that, that my understanding that the, that the first requirement is met because of the concept of intangible heritage. That, that, that's how I see it. So I need you to respond to that. Yes. They so, have a right mm -hmm. for, to the protection and preservation of their culture. And cultural heritage would include tangible and intangible, heritage, and intangible and intangible uh, heritage resource. Now, I, I, I must simplify the question again because maybe I missed something. What is the city saying? Did the applicants establish the first requirement? No, is that, is the city no saying, they, they, they didn't no. even address the first requirement. The first requirement, your leadership has correctly identified the yes. test. Do, and and it's, if I may simplify it further, it's, the question is this. Will the development harm intangible heritage? That's the crusp of the issue. The applicants no. don't answer that question because they didn't even ask it in making out their case. They asked the question, will, will the development harm their right to review based on their review grounds? Yeah. And that's the wrong question. Yeah. That's the point that the court made in Alta, was the wrong question posed by the applicants in that case. It was the wrong question considered by the High Court, and the Constitutional Court said that's not the test in interim proceedings. The test is, will the development in this case harm the right to intangible heritage? Will it irreparably harm? And the evidence is that it won't. And, and, and that evidence is not only a version, it's uncontested. The applicants didn't even think to contest it because they, either they had no answer, which we submit is what the evidence is. I think it's twofold. One is that they don't have an answer to that. And secondly, they, they misapplied the test. They were thinking right to review instead of right to heritage. I'm thinking, why is, are you saying the applicant didn't answer the question? Did the applicant not say, oh, I see what you mean. They, they, was, they didn't contextualize it. Yeah. Because the project, um, and that is why I actually quoted from my notes the, what the developer, um, how the developer adapted the plans mm. in order to incorporate 
certain features to comply with the conditions and also to, to, um, to preserve the cultural heritage, be yes. it tangible or intangible. Yes. Yeah. Yes. yes, exactly. So yeah. the development responded to that yes. part of the engagement yes. process, part of the participation process. It wasn't just a, a tick box exercise. Yes. Let's yes. Hear your submissions and we're going to go ahead anyway. There and one a, group, mm -hmm. well, we are dealing with two groups, am I right? Pro, the, those are for the, the, the First Nation groupings, for and against. I, 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 I don't. I need you to clarify. Be, I want to know. Are we dealing just with two groups here, two or three groups there, here? There might that be more than two. There's not we, consensus. We, we, at, we at least have um, uh, proponents and supporters of the development, including yeah. First Nations groups, and there are opponents who include First Nation groups. There may also be other people. Yeah, who no, I'm, I'm only interested in the First Nations uh, groups. That's all. I'm not interested in in people who who have no uh, uh, who have no connection to the uh, uh, property in terms of their culture and their heritage. I'm that that, that yeah. is the, the yeah. crisp question, and, 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 yes. and there are differences of opinion. Yes, yeah. So the conditions satisfied one grouping. No, the, the conditions aren't aimed at satisfying a group of people. The conditions are... Let's just talk First Nations. Yes, the, so the conditions... You know, that term is very important, First Nations. Let's just talk about them. The, the conditions? Part of a, a, a certain grouping of the First Nations were consulted, the plans were adapted, and those features were accommodated and incorporated to satisfy any concerns raised with regard to tangible and intangible heritage resources. The lady, yes and no. Yes, well, yes and more. Okay. Yes, it, it, it satisfied um, some of the First Nations groupings. Yes. And, but it, it, the, the conditions weren't aimed at merely satisfying the groupings. Mm -hmm. The conditions were aimed at protecting the intangible heritage of the site. That's, what, that's the, the point. And the evidence is that that is not only good protection of the, of the heritage, but it advances the, the heritage, it protects it in a way which has never been done before. And Would it that be in compliance with international law? Yes, complies with the international consultation requirements, certainly because of that adaptation and, and consideration. And it advances and protects... I must confess that when one reads, the, when I read the papers and I see all the, the features that is going to be in this development, mm. it, it sounds actually quite impressive when you read it. It does, And it yes. sounds as if it is fair and reasonable. Mm -hmm. But... When the amici then argue, then I, I, I pose the question to myself, um, is, would that be sufficient for, for the First Nations? Milady, may I come to the question of participation? It's, it's, it's in the latter half of my argument. Yeah, I'm, I'm glad we, we can get there because that is one of the issues that I'm also concerned yes, no, about. It, it's a, it's after a central hearing feature. the amicus. But sorry, I'm interrupting you now. Let's not go to participation. I don't want to disrupt you further. You were busy addressing something that I've raised, and then you can deal with participation. I'm indebted to your ladyship. Yeah. So, so the, the, the point about, um, about Alta is that the, the, it focuses the court's question, the mind yes. on whether the, the development will harm heritage. And uh, that relates to the apprehension of harm. And then in relation to balance of convenience, the court is is, is engaged in a, in a, in a, a practical weighing up exercise. What yes. would the harm be if the interdict is granted? And what would the harm be if the interdict is refused? And that again considers the consequences. So, so turning to those consequences, the, the first question is the first question that your ladyship raised uh, on the first day of the hearing and your ladyship put to me earlier is, what is the status quo? What are we dealing with at the moment? Yes. And the, the, the two parts to, the, to that, it's, it's the land use on the site at, at the time the decisions were made, and um, that's dealt with in our heads of argument, if I may refer your ladyship to paragraph 20 of the heads of argument.
So we, at the, the time that the decision was made by the mayor and the province, the, the River Club site was an exclusive use golf club and an asphalt parking lot. And the, the evidence from the respondents is that that degradation runs completely contrary to the site's heritage. And it does nothing at all to echo or respect or celebrate the First Nations history and experiences on and around the River Club site. A golf course, parking lot, and concrete rubbish strewn canal are the antithesis of how First Nations used and experienced the site. Paragraph 22, the mayor explained, the subject property fails the site's heritage. Nothing positive is gained from preserving the status quo. And in, in paragraph 23, we say that none of this evidence is disputed, and there's references which I won't take your ladyship to. Um, so, in fact, my learned friend said that the, 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 the golf course and, and parking lot use are offensive to the site's heritage. So, so we, we're on common, common ground there. What we have now is things have moved on. We now have a golf course which was, was, which was at least green, even, even though the lawns were alien vegetation, not indigenous vegetation, that's now being transformed into a, a construction site. So freezing things at the, mo at the moment, the status quo, does not freeze a heritage-friendly situation. What would be the consequences of freezing the development, of stopping the development and not allowing it to go ahead? That's that's the question of what prejudice would, be, would occur if the interdict is granted. And one needs to then look at the benefits of the development which won't happen if the interdict is granted. And they dealt with, um, from paragraph 53 of the city's heads, actually maybe uh, if we could just stay where your leadership is, paragraph 24. The, the evidence is that, it's un, and it's undisputed evidence, that the development will have the following benefits. The Liesbeck River will be transformed from a polluted concrete canal into a naturalized river course with an indigenously uh, planted landscape. And your ladyship, may I take your ladyship to a record to show a visual image of what it's going to look like? It's at page 1452 of the record. Um. And so these are the... Um, the images of what the visual uh, impact assessment images, um, the evidence before the decision makers. So here we see the first image is the green corridor. And th this picture is taken, um, the map shows, um, is taken with the ones back towards the, the canal, the, what is currently the canal and the river. So this is the view from the, the river towards the Amazon building. And one sees that there's a, a that there's some space between the river and Amazon building, which is, um, has d indigenous vegetation and it's behind trees. And that's because there's a buffer built into the conditions. So these tall buildings may not be built right on the river. There has to be this green uh, space between the river and the, the canals, which, which will be open to the public. And the second um, image on that, and, and so the, this, vision of what, or this picture of what the development is going to result in, is far more harmonious with the site's heritage. Then the, the next picture is various heritage commemoration features. At the moment, there's none of this. If one went to the golf course, one would just see a, a golf course. No, no one would know that the site had the heritage. That's going to be changed with the development. And then over the page, Milady, does, Milady, does your uh, ladyship have color images? So there's a picture of the, um, the rehabilitated river. Currently it's a, a canal, and it'll be transformed into a, a natural river. And that's far more consistent with the, the site's intangible heritage. And not only are these promises by the developer, these have been incorporated into legally binding conditions. So your leadership would have seen the decisions that have been made have conditions and schedules, and those conditions then have the force of law through the bylaw. 
it would be an offense to not do all of this, and it's, a, it's, it's enforceable. So these are things that will happen. The environment will be rehabilitated. So that's, those are the benefits for, for heritage. Oh, sorry, I, I was dealing with the, with the other benefits. So that's the river. That's the first one. So if I may return to the heads, um, the city's heads, then deal with open space, which is in fact going to be increased. So uh, this is uh, back to the city's heads, paragraph 24.2. The amount of open space will, will be increased. There will be um, an establishment of a cultural heritage and media center, which will be prominently located in the development to capitalize on the views. And this will allow the First Nations history to be recorded and taught in their own terms. And, and I'm going to come back to this point, but I just want to link it to the, the following two requirements and aspects of the development. There will be a construction of an amphitheater for cultural performances. There will be a, an indigenous garden, which will be actively used and managed by the First Nations, which will allow their knowledge of food and medicine to be put into practice and so preserved. And those three features of the way in which the development will give life to the intangible heritage of the site. Because the intangible heritage is, is carried in an oral tradition in the memories and lives of the First Nations groupings. At the moment, they, they lack the space to give expression and to communicate that and, and to give life to it. The applicants did not comment on these features. The, the, applicants, the applicants were very involved. In no, I'm saying the, the applicants, the, the applicants in this matter, yes. did not comment on these features to say we, we, we are offended by these the features, no. No. Uh, we, we, we don't like this aspect of the development or that aspect of the development. They didn't do that. No. There's no objection to any of this. There's no suggestion yeah. that this, this undermines the heritage yes. or doesn't give There's no proper such effect. suggestion. And so importantly, we'll this hear from the applicant uh, what their views are with regard to how the, the heritage, or how the First Nations uh, and their, view, their views and their cultural heritage were accommodated and what the applicants' views are on those um, aspects that were, in, were uh, uh, in, incorporated as well as the conditions that were opposed and whether they're happy with the, the manner in which the developer uh, accommodated the First Nations. Uh, I'm just thinking out loud now. I didn't hear the applicant say anything about no. The features. Milady, of, co of course they'll say that they're not happy with this. But, no, the applicants but basically are saying we don't want the concrete jungle. Yes. Well, well, so the, the focus was more on the, the high-rise buildings than the actual park that we see in the eco-trail, etc., etc. So no. the, the practical reality is, is, is one can't get these features without the buildings. It's part of the development. The development pays for all of this, pays for the naturalized river and the indigenous garden and the amphitheater. The, the, you know, the, the solution for the applicants is that maybe someone will expropriate it. It's a pipe dream. It's not going to happen. This is going to happen. The, these features, which are not only unobjectionable, but are, are indisputably beneficial, are linked to the buildings. One can't have one without the other. It's a, and it's there, are, a very no, good there are no current plans afoot to declare this property as a world heritage site or provide provincial protection or even extend the sorry the provisional protection that lapsed as no. we speak. No, there's no the, the provisional protection orders lapsed. The, the reference to world heritage site that's never been suggested. Mm -hmm. it's, I mean, I think it's been it's been mentioned, but there's no yes. application or or. Um, UNESCO would be the body yes. that would, would grant yes. this. The, 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 there's no r serious suggestion that the site would qualify as a World Heritage Site. The debate Was has been whether... Was anything done in the past about the status of this site? Or is it just this development that triggered all... Uh, I'm, I'm asking this because I, I, I'm, I'm trying to understand. The applicants will, will reply later, but did the applicants take any steps to protect no, this? No, no your ladyship, but the answer is, 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 your ladyship asked that question, that very relevant question. In fact, I was going to, to deal with it because it's, a, it's an important question. Your, your ladyship put that question to my learned friend. And the answer was, 
um, under apartheid, it was not possible for the applicants to do anything. And we accept that. However, it's been 27 years since the end of apartheid. And there have also been no steps taken to change the, the site. And even if the site, so there's a debate about whether it's a provincial heritage, it's of provincial value or, or national value. Yes. But even if such a protection would be granted, that doesn't then transform the site into a pre-colonial commemoration. It simply means that in order for development to happen, a permit is required. So it's a, it's a freezing order which doesn't then give anything to heritage. And the, um, so, yeah, so, so, so the, the ob obtaining any kind of statutory recognition wouldn't do anything in practical terms to advance the, the, the intangible heritage. There is only one option on the table to protect and advance heritage, and that's the development. And that's been the case despite the fact, and I'll refer your ladyship to, to plans which were, were supported by the city 18 years ago to declare a, an urban park. And this, the city's undisputed evidence is that's a pipe dream. It's there, it's a policy, it's an aspiration, but there's simply no money for it. It's not going to happen. Now, the city also said that should this development go ahead, First Nations would still be consulted and yes. they would still be able to make contributions. Is, is that the case? Or will, 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 will the development just go in accordance with the plans and um, by incorporating the features as stated in the project? The, as the, adapted, the plans as adapted? There is a, a condition, I think it's condition yes. 21, yes. which requires ongoing con further yes. consultation about the, the, the list of, of features. And, yes. and that consultation must include at least the First Nations, yeah. um, First Nations group and the second applicant. They're specifically named as, as people who must be... Yeah, considered. but I would imagine that the applicants are saying, but then the higher rises are there, we, we must just be consulted uh, in respect of eight or... A, B, C, D, and E, but the high rises are there. So the, I'm, I'm just saying the, yeah. that condition would not really assist the applicants with their objection to the high rises. There's going to, yeah, the, the, but, but the, the answer to that is that there was extensive consultation yes. about the high rises. Mm. Mo, and I'll take your ladyship through. We've got a, we sit into our heads of argument. Yeah, I think paragraph. I'm interfering now because my concern is also about the. Yeah, we'll, we'll get there. Consultation. The, the adequacy no. of consultation and the extensiveness of the consultation is something that, um, well, that, was that the, we will refer your ladyship so. to. Yes. Yeah, sorry, I'm interrupting you. So, so we were dealing with the benefits. Um, there's an indigenous garden yes. um, and then um, indigenous names in, in sub six, an eco trail around the development. That will align with the First Nations' deep appreciation of the site's ecology and allow visitors and pedestrians to experience the ecology on foot. This, this refers to the public accessibility, which will be secured in a servitude on the site. Currently, the public don't have access to the site. The golf course would have been private. You'd have to be a member of that golf course or pay to get in. That's, not, that's exclusionary. That's the antithesis of, of commemoration. And um, would all these positive features then impact on the issue of balance of convenience? Yes, yes, absolutely. It's critical to balance of convenience mm. because these are the things which will be lost. The, the, the court order, if a court, an order by this court saying the interdict can't go ahead means that these benefits may not take place. Not only these, these benefits will not take place because the development will be stalled. And there is no other option, there is no other way to achieve these benefits. So, so that, that is a very heavy consideration of balance of convenience. And on the other hand, there, there is no prejudice that will result if the interdict is refused. I've mentioned three um, benefits, three categories yes. of benefits of the, of the development. We've dealt with heritage. The second is environment. There's no dispute about that either. The development will rehabilitate a degraded site and it will improve biodiversity. And the evidence is clear on that. The third aspect, and it's one that um, 
is, is one of the particular reasons why the cities in, in, involved in this case at this stage is the public interest in the development and the development proceeding. The first aspect of public interest is the need for economic recovery in the city and in the country, I suppose. Um, may I refer your ladyship to the record, volume four, page 1435. Here the mayor is referring to the, um, to the accompanying affidavit of Mr. Crayling, who is, who is the um, city's expert on economic matters. And he says in that affidavit, um, or that affidavit explains, the city is in the midst of a fourfold economic crisis. Economic output, construction and con confidence are at a worrying low levels, while unemployment is at an alarming and record-breaking peak. The I development suppose when it is comes to the protection and preservation of cultural heritage, there's no monetary value to be attached to it. I'm sorry, Milady. When it comes to the protection of cult cultural values, cultural tradition, or the preservation of the, uh, the, the uh, cultures and traditions, yes. no economic value can be attached to it. And I, I'm specifically, I, I did consider when I read this paragraph, I thought, well, uh, whether the loss is one billion or five billion, how, how does one weigh that? Oh. Oh. Should there be some sort of negative impact uh, or some harm to cultures and traditions? So, so, so uh, of the, the, the notion of weighing um, competing considerations mm. is, is, is one that frequently arises for decision makers mm. in these kinds of decisions because it often happens that there's a trade-off between development and protection of various rights, heritage, environment, mm. etc. This development has a unique feature in that there is no trade-off. It's not a question of either we get the economic benefits or we protect heritage. This development, and it's undisputed on the evidence, has the very, very happy and favorable uh, feature in that it achieves both. It, it, it balances both. Sorry? I say it's a, balance, it, it's ba it's a balancing act. Well, I, I submit it's not a balance. It's not a balance to, to say that on the one hand we've got protection of heritage and on the other hand we've got economic advantage. What we have in this case is both of those are on the same side of the scale. On the one hand, on the, on the on this side of the scale, we've got protection of heritage and economic development. And that's the one, that's the, the reason to refuse the interdict. On the other hand, you've got economic deprivation and harm to, to heritage. And the scale sits like this, milady. I it's suppose stock. first prize for the applicants would be that the property be expropriated, uh, which, which um, appears not to be a viable option. It's, it's not only not viable, it's not even a proposal. Yeah. The applicants' papers don't even suggest that it should be expropriated. That's something that my learned friend came up with because he had no answer to your ladyship's questions. Your ladyship was saying, well, what should happen to the, to the property? And he said, well, I suppose it could be expropriated because there's a power in the act. But that's, a, that's a, an ocean of difference between a factual prospect of it actually happening or even a request for it to happen. Which government would do it with what, what funds? How would all of this be financed? The, the, the only evidence is that that is a pipe dream. It's not going to happen. So if one removes that possibility, what is left? What, what what is left is two options, my lady. The one option is the development proceeds with all of its economic, employment, heritage advantages. And the other option is stop the development, stop the economic advantages, stop the heritage advantages, stop the cultural, environmental, and all those other advantages. But that wouldn't be a permanent stop. That well, would be it, just a stop to perhaps pause and reflect and meet each other halfway? The, the, the evidence from the, the applicant, from the, from the developer, is that a, a stop for a period of 18 months to two years while a review is running would kill the development. So in practice, it would actually be a permanent stop. That's a, a common feature with objections to heritage at this late stage. Because of the way the finances work, the holding costs make it unaffordable. 
the development collapses. Amazon moves on to somewhere else because it can't wait two years to establish its new office. The financial viability collapses and none of these advantages ever materialize. That's, that's the undisputed evidence. So it's not temporary. But even if it were temporary, in the economic crisis in which Cape Town finds itself now, we can't afford to wait two years to feed people who are starving and who are in poverty and who need jobs and need economic recovery. That's not a delay which can be afforded. There's a, the, your ladyship is faced with this massive, compelling reason to allow the development to go ahead and no arguments on the other side. It's a no-brainer, my lady, with respect. I'm just considering now, should the development proceed? When will this review be heard? When would the review be yeah. heard? Do you have a date for the review? There's no, no date. No There's date. no supplementary papers. Well, the Rule 53 record hasn't even been filed. So what your ladyship... The record hasn't been filed? No, as far as I know, the record hasn't been filed. So, and the volume of papers that have dealt with this give your ladyship a, a, an indication of what the review will mm -hmm. entail. Just the case against the city, the, the applicants say that they haven't even formulated a case. They're going to look, look in the Rule 53 record and they're going to file papers. And if an interdict is granted, they're going to have every incentive to drag the matter out, or at least the other way around, no incentive to, to, to expedite the matter. And, and whatever time frames are, are put, in practical terms, those always get extended. The relief that's sought is a, an interdict pending the final determination of a review. So even if they failed in the High Court, that could go on appeal to the Supreme Court of Appeal, and the Constitutional Court. One's looking at years, my lady. So if the construction continues, how would that then impact on the review? Is it possible that the review could just become moot? I'm well, just asking. Your, your ladyship asked that question yesterday. Yes. And, and it's a very important question, my lady. And your, your ladyship asked um, in, when the, the question was raised about the delay in instituting proceedings and your ladyship said, well, what about um, the developer proceeding at its own risk? Yes. And, and that question is important and it relates to the case in, in, in answer to your ladyship's question which you've posed now. And that's what are the consequences for the review? Well, let's, let's assume that the review succeeds and that the court finds there was some review, reviewable irregularity. And then it comes to a question of remedy. What does the court do? And your ladyship has the references to the very wide uh, discretion which a court has to grant just and equitable relief. It can, gr it can order the demolition of buildings, it can, it or it can order that, that the development be modified, that the, the heights be reduced, there's a, there's a, or, or that investigation be done into all of those things. And there's a potential uh, notional um, answer at that stage of the proceedings in relation to remedy for the, the developer to say, but the, develop, the buildings are up. And the applicants have the answer which your ladyship asked yesterday. And the answer is, no, you can't say that because you proceeded against your own risk. They knew about the case. They knew, they knew about the, cha the pending review because it's been instituted. And they continued with construction. So they will not be able to say at the re remedy stage in a review that this court is, is in any way um, obstructed in granting review, in, in setting aside the decisions and granting review relief. So, so the question about the developer proceeding at its own risk is a very strong reason for this court to refuse an interdict. It doesn't in any way that the preceding construction does not, given that the developers are proceeding at their own risk, it does not provide an obstacle to obtaining whatever re review relief the applicants may be entitled to. See, the, so there will be other possibilities. Sorry. I say so if this review should uh, if the construction should proceed, there will be remedies available. There, sorry, there will be? There will be remedies available. The yes. city is saying there will be remedies available yes. uh, in terms of, well, that is, would also probably be costly, but toning down from 10 stories to five stories, I'm just making an example. That's the developer's problem. Mm. It's a developer's problem because the developer's proceeding at its mm. own risk. It understands that and it's going ahead. 
it won't be able to, it'll be constrained in saying to this court, well, the court should just, if, if notionally the, the applicants show that, that, some, that they've got a review ground, they would then be free to say, this court must consider what to do without regard to the, the ongoing construction. So in simple terms, what the city is saying is, this court should not have any reason to intervene. Mm. The, uh, in the review proceedings, the review court can yes. decide whether they should be in Absolutely. That's the appropriate yeah. remedy in this. That's, that's, that, we, we, we talk about alternative remedy. Yeah. That is the, what the applicant, sh they've done, they've instituted the review. That's, what they, 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 that's the case that they've, they've brought, and that's the case that they must proceed with. But I would imagine this court, I don't, know, I don't even know whether it will be of assistance, but should this court decide to stop the construction, this court can then also regulate the further conduct of this matter by ordering that the review must then be heard on an expedited basis. This court would be empowered to do that. Well, those kinds of orders are, are, are often, uh, you know, the, 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 there's a practical reality. The court can, can say, well, you must file your, your record by next week and, and, and replying paper, yes. uh, supplementary papers by, by next month. And, and in my experience, milady, those, those timetables are always extended because there's just time is needed to, to, to the, the, the record is going to be massive in this case. The applicants are going to need time to read through that, to formulate their, their supplementary papers. The, the respondents are going to have to, to consider those, to file answers. It's, um, it would be very difficult for the, the parties to anticipate how long they would need to to formulate a timetable because we, they don't even no one knows how long the record is. So um, no, notionally, yes, one one could say let's have an expedited review. But in practice, um, it's going to take longer than what we expect. And given the relief being sought about uh, for uh, an interdict pending final determination, even an expedited review hearing by this court. Would still, well, we'd still need to add the, the time required by the appeal courts to consider the matter, and, and this court is not in the power to, to say that the appeal must be decided in, in one yeah. month or whatever. So, so one is dealing with a, an indeterminate time, and um, there's no way for the court to, to reduce that cert uncertainty. I think it's, it's fairly safe to say that it's going to be an extended time. We're talking about years, at least more than a year, 18 months, and the evidence is that 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 delay, that the, the delay that's inevitable, shouldn't it be granted, would be terminal to the development. So, so we're dealing with the suite of, of, of benefits for the development, heritage, environmental. I was dealing with the, the economic advantages, and, and your ladyship asked me, well, do we, is the court meant to balance these out? And, and, and my submission is that there's no need for that because they, they both sit on the same side of the scale. The, one gets the benefits of development and the benefits of the economic, uh, the economic advantages of development. So the, the, and those economic advantages are very considerable and very important in this case. They dealt but with in the affidavits. for a moment? Hmm. Maybe the applicant can address the court later on. Had this development not been on the table, the River Club would probably still have been a golf course? It would have, that's, that and seems to be the case, my lady. That, is that yes. the position? Yes, as it, as it has been for 27 no. years. And it would, it would continue to not celebrate and commemorate and, um, the, the heritage and would continue to degrade the heritage. And, and the applicants would, wouldn't no. be coming to court to say that the golf course is offensive and um, no. it must, something must be done. The status quo would have continued. So, so what we have is, is 27 years plus hundreds of years since colonialization of degradation and non-recognition of heritage. And here we have a project to say, no, let's fix that. And the, the applicants come to court and say, no, don't do that. And they don't, they don't say what else will happen. In fact, the evidence is that they're not going to do anything else. There is no, there is no other option. It's, a, it's an application in which they only invite the court to do harm. 